The posterior cruciate ligament is the largest ligament in the knee, about 30 to 50 percent larger than the anterior cruciate ligament, and is therefore one of the most difficult to damage. However, PCL injuries still account for about 10 percent of all injuries, and it's really important as a doctor to understand how to diagnose and manage these injuries. So in today, uh, today's video we're going to discuss what a PCL is, a little bit about the anatomy of the knee, the mechanism in which you can injure them, any clinical features that you'll get as a, result, as a result of that, some examples of how you can injure them, then move on to the investigations and the management of the condition. So we're going to move on to the anatomy now and we're going to use this handy diagram here. So this is a right knee, you can tell that because the fibula is always lateral. Um, so you can see the posterior cruciate ligament um, marked with the arrow. So you can tell this is the posterior cruciate ligament because the two ligaments form a cross, hence cruciate. It's about 30 to 50% larger than the anterior cruciate ligament. Um, so this comes from the uh, posterior tibial sulcus and attaches to the middle, uh, the medial condyle on the femur, and it's splied by the middle geniculate artery. Um, so as I already mentioned, it's about 30 to 50 percent bigger than the ACL, and its main role is to stop the posterior dislocation of the tibia on the femur. So that leads us nicely on to the mechanism of injury. So as with the anterior cruciate ligament, I'm going to use my arms to help with the example. So this is your femur and this is your tibia. So the main action, as we just mentioned, of the posterior collateral, uh, cruciate ligament is to prevent the posterior dislocation of the tibia on the femur, so to stop it from going that way. And the main mechanism of injury in which we see this is not actually a sporting injury, it's in car crashes. It's when people have their feet up on the dashboard, there's a hard impact onto the anterior tibia, knocking it posteriorly and rupturing the posterior collateral ligament, and that's called a dashboard injury. So in sports, um, the rise of shin pads have meant that um, luckily there's lost tib less tibia fractures because people aren't getting studded on the, the shin bone, the tibia, and fracturing their tibia. However, it means that all the force is now going through the posterior uh, cruciate ligament and forcing the leg backwards that way instead. And then finally, the other way that you can damage the posterior cruciate ligament is by hyperextension. It's fairly non-specific injury. Again, very difficult to differentiate between that and an ACL when you have a history like that. So you need to move on to your investigations to um, discover that. But anyway, um, when discussing the history, let's move on to some of the risk factors and then the clinical features. So risk factors are the same as the ACL really, it's an uneven playing surface, a history of kind of a direct blow that's forcing the tibia uh, posteriorly, or just a history of PCL ruptures in general. So let's discuss a few of the clinical features. Now the most important thing to say is that you can rupture your PCL and continue playing. Um, at the time you'll notice swelling and a decreased range of movement. But um, the example that's famous is Roger Craig from the San Francisco 49ers who managed to play his entire career with a ruptured posterior cruciate ligament without realizing. Um, so it's actually quite a non-specific injury normally in that you get swelling, you get decreased range of movement and you get this instability, but you can actually continue playing high-end sports. Now this isn't the case for everybody because some people have uh, are a lot more posterior dominant um, so rely a lot more on the PCL than the ACL and the ACL can't take over. Um, but within two to four weeks, normally the swelling's gone down and people are able to return to the sport. One thing that they may notice during this time is that any actions where they're going downhill, so going downstairs or running downhill, that will put more strain on the PCL and they might notice instability or a bit of moderate posterior knee pain. But the pain's not normally super severe and it normally doesn't fully interfere with the sport. So now we move on to the pitch side test that you can do to check for a PCL injury. So the first of these and the most accurate is the posterior draw test, where you draw the patient's knee up to 90 degrees of flexion, place your thumbs on the tibial tuberosity and apply a posterior traction and check for a firm endpoint. If the firm endpoint is lost and the endpoint is lax, then you suspect a PCL injury. You also want to do an anterior draw test at the same time of this to check for an ACL injury as the two tend to come together. Alongside this you can check for the posterior sag sign. So again the patient's lying supine, this time you flex both of their knees up to 90 degrees and you get down onto your knees and observe for posterior shift of the tibia which would again imply a PCL injury. 
So now that we've seen what tests you can do at the pitch side, it's time to discuss the investigations and the management of the condition. So when you get into A&E, the first investigation that they want to do is an x-ray of the knee. So this is following the Ottawa knee rules for uh, x-ray investigations, which I'll put up just here. Um, and they're going to basically be looking if there's been any kind of avulsion fractures and any posterior subluxation of the tibia, which you may be able to see on x-ray. And then once all that stuff's been ruled out, they're going to move on to an MRI, which is the most specific way to detect any uh, ligamentous injuries and will identify any PCL tears. And once you've got your PCL tear, it's basically just supportive rehabilitation, physiotherapy and weight bearing. Um, with four to six weeks of that, you should hopefully be back to sport soon. The only time that you'll consider surgery is if there's been a bony avulsion, so a bit of the bone has come off with the ligament, um, or if there's been any chronic instability within the joint. So that about wraps it up for the, for the PCL video. Um, I hope you've enjoyed and make sure you go and check out the anterior cruciate ligament video if you want some more information on that.